everyone, my name's Michelle and this is my channel Sewing Bunny and thank you for joining me in my video today which is a sew along. Um, it's been voted by you guys because if you had seen my May sewing plans then you'll know that I put up for a vote as to which one of my plans you would like to see as a sew along and the one that uh, won the vote was the Tilly the Buttons Mabel pattern. So the version that I'm going to be sewing up is going to be the dress version. So you can see on the front here, this is the dress version here. Um, and we do have a top version here, but what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be doing the dress version, but rather than having these long sleeves, I'm going to be doing the short sleeves here. Um, if I turn it round on the back, you can see um, an image there of the dress version with the short sleeves. So that is what I'm going to be doing. So I'm really excited to um, try this pattern. It's quite a new pattern from Tilly and the Buttons. Um, and it's also the first time I'm going to be doing shirring. So um, yeah, wish me luck. Um, and yeah, you'll see how I get on. <laughs> so first off, I need to um, select what size I want to make. Now on the back, there are um, um, like your measurements as to what size you would be. So I've got a rough idea of um, which one I'm going to make, but it doesn't have finished garment measurements on the packet on the outside. So I'm going to open it up because yeah, I haven't even opened this yet. Um, and I'm gonna have a look in the booklet and just see whether it gives me any finished garment measurements. Okay, so inside the envelope, you do have the little instruction booklet. And on the first page, it does give you the body measurements and the finished garment measurements. Now on the finished garment measurements, it only gives you the bust and the hips. It doesn't give you the waist, which for me is probably one of the things that I normally look out for in dresses, um, just because I don't want it to be too tight on the waist. I don't want it to be, to be too big on the waist. I want it to have, um, you know, shape and to be able to fit me. Um, but yeah, as I said, I don't want it too tight or too loose. And this doesn't have the finished garment measurements on the waist. Um, and I presume that is because the waist is shirt and I suppose um, depending on your skill levels or your sharing elastic or your stitch length all that sort of stuff can change the um, the finish I guess on the waist so to be honest I'm probably actually going to ignore the um, finished garment measurements because it's all very um, sort of like loose and oversized because if you have a look, um, you've got this sort of blousey effect at the top. You've got this little tie here, so you can pull it in. Um, so you can adjust, I guess, the bust um, sort of measurement. And then the skirt is quite a free flowing skirt. So of course there are, you know, lots of, there's lots of room in it. So if I'm having a look at my body measurements as to which size I should make. So my measurements at the moment, I'm a 37 inch bust, I'm a 32 inch waist and I'm a 43 inch hip. So if I have a look on the body measurements um, guide, then that puts me probably the best one is in a size five. So a size five is a 38 inch bust. So that's one inch larger than my bust. Um, but the size four is a 36 inch bust. So that's an inch smaller than uh, my bust. So I'm kind of thinking, as I said, because of the top here, you can pull it in. So I'm thinking that um, extra inch will actually be fine sort of either way. Um, so I'm thinking maybe the size five to make it a bit bigger. I think I'd rather pull it in for it to be, um, you know, make it a little bit tighter than have it a bit too small and let it out. That kind of makes sense um and then for a waist for the size five is bang on my measurements it's a 32 inch so more than happy with that now for the hip it does say 41 which is two inches smaller than my hip but as i mentioned the skirt is quite free flowing so i don't think i'm going to need to worry about that if it helps, then the finished garment measurement for the hip is 59 and a half. So I think I'll be absolutely fine. So I think I'm going to go for a size five. I don't think I need to grade in between sizes or anything like that. I think I'll be fine just doing the standard size five. So that's what I'm going to do.
so that is the pattern cut out. You can just see most of it on the chair just there. Um, but I have picked out the skirt section because, well, number one, I forgot to add the sharing lines that was on the pattern. Um, so I've just added um, those lines in. And now you'll notice this is the skirt piece, which is a very, very, very short skirt. <laughs> um, and that is because um, on Tilly's um, pattern, she's actually um, put on there that to save paper, um, they've just given the measurements. So if you want to do the, um, like the blouse version, then this is enough to do um, like the peplum. Um, otherwise, you need to add on another 60 centimetres onto this piece. Um, now, I get it's brilliant, you know, kind of saving paper and everything. It just means it's on two bits of paper, which is great. Uh, for me, I like to have an actual pattern piece because when I'm um, lying out my pattern pieces on my fabric, I don't like drawing directly onto my fabric. I like to have a pattern piece. So um, great that, you know, Tilly is saving paper, but for me, I like to have the pattern piece. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, add my 60 centimetres to the bottom of this using um, some extra tracing paper. I'm going to then stick them together so that I have got one skirt piece because yeah, for me, that is going to be a lot easier when I'm trying to, um, you know, lie out my pattern pieces on my fabric. Now, I thought I would do a little bit of a close up on this bit. Now, I'm sure a lot of you know how to cut um, a rectangle from um, you know a piece of paper but I just kind of thought you know what some people might not um, feel comfortable adding on the rectangle and um, thinking well how can I make it straight um, you know so I kind of thought this might be a nice bit just to kind of add in so um, I've got my skirt piece here which is the bit that I uh, am going to have at the top and then I need to extend by 60 centimetres. Um, now I said 60 centimetres, you've also got inches as well. Um, Tilly said that it was 23.5 inches. Um, now actually I'll probably use inches for when I'm um, cutting out this. And that is because I'm gonna use this. This is a quilting ruler. And this just makes it so much easier um, when you're cutting out sort of larger um, bits of uh, paper because you've got a wider um, sort of area to sort of play with. So rather than just using your standard uh, ruler, like 30 centimetre ruler, then um, this will give you a lot more coverage and be a bit easier to use when you're lining up your lines. So um, first thing is, is that you want to create a straight line. Um, so what I would do is I would um, again, this is just using sort of like um, sort of quilting sort of techniques that I've kind of learned from when I've been doing my uh, my quilts is um, try and get a straight line. Now, this is the edge of the tracing paper, which is a straight line. So I'm going to line up the bottom of the ruler with that straight line so that then it creates this kind of like right angle. Okay, so there we go, we have that first line there. So now I need to measure um, how far down on this side. Now I mentioned that um, Tilly said that it was 23 and a half inches on the pattern. I'm very lucky because this is a 24 inch um, long ruler. So it's been nice and easy for me. <laughs> I love this ruler. Um, they're not the cheapest things in the world, but they are, they're just brilliant. So I'm going to try and get this all in shot. Um, so I'm going to shuffle this up. So I'm trying to work as far back as I can. <laughs> so um, you can see the line um, up here and then I've got my, my um, already created line just in the paper down here. So I'm going to line the top um, of this ruler up here. I'm going to make sure that that sits nicely um, there and that it sits nicely all the way along here. There we go, so I've um, lined it up across that line at the top and then all the way down here. And um, oh, just slightly out of shot, let me just adjust the camera slightly. There we go, so just here, can you see my 22, 23? So it's 23 and a half, which is just here. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a dot just where it's 23 and a half, just on the edge of the paper. Right, 
there and then also on the other side. That just helped me line that up. Turn the ruler around this way and I'm going to do more or less kind of what I did at the top where I'm going to line up this dot, that dot there along this bit here as well and that will give me um, a straight edge. So let me just adjust that. Okay, so I've lined up um, this bit down here. Um, my, again, let me just adjust my camera for you here. I don't know if you can see, but my little dot is there. And then my second dot is here. So that gives me something to line it up against. So now I'm gonna draw a line all down this side. There we go. So I've drawn that line there. Okay, so I've adjusted my tripod. You are as high up as the tripod will go, which is probably about six and a half foot. <laughs> so I'm standing on a stool so that I can actually see that it looks okay. Um, so uh, that's the bottom of the skirt. This is the top of the skirt. And this is um, my skirt piece. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna line this skirt piece along um, the top here and I'm going to actually stick it um, together so I'll just do that quickly Okay, so can you see that I have taped the top of the skirt all along that line? So I've lined it all up so that I know it's straight and that it's straight on this side as well. And now I'm going to grab my uh, quilting ruler and I'm going to join up those ends as well. And in theory, it should be 23 and a half inches. So let me just line that all up. There we go, I've lined it all up and uh, I don't know if you'll be able to see from all the way up here, but it is absolutely bang on 23 and a half inches. So I'm gonna draw a line um, that way and then I will have a perfect rectangle piece that is added on to this part of the skirt. And there we have the finished skirt pattern piece. So if you wanted to do the same so that you can uh, lie it up against your fabric, then yeah, I hope that helps a little bit. Okay, so now the pattern pieces are all cut out ready, I can now start placing them on my fabric. So my fabric of choice is this lovely viscose because I wanted to keep the dress really nice and flowy. So this is a floral viscose, um, which I picked up from Little Miss So-and-So when I went to the Stitch Festival. Um, it's really, really pretty fabric. I think it'll look lovely in this um, Mabel dress. So I've got three meters um, of this fabric. Um, on the back of the um, envelope, it does tell you about fabric requirements. And um, this is a wider fabric. So I think it's about 100 and 30, 540, I think this one is. Um, and it does say for 140 wide um, fabric for sizes between a one and a 10. Um, for the dress I'm making, I need 2.8 meters. So I should have um, enough there to play around with. So yes, I'm going to get that uh, cut out and yeah, I'll wish you on a fast forward again.
so pattern pieces are all cut out. I actually had quite a lot of leftover fabric. Um, I've got one piece here, which is just shy of a metre, um, minus like a chunk <laughs> um, from when I cut the, um, the back bodice. Um, but yeah, I can probably make myself maybe squeeze myself a little cami top out of that, which is brilliant, plus um, a little strip um, of extra, which I could probably use um, maybe for like the straps, which would be brilliant. So I'm gonna keep that to one side for another time. I also do have um, some scrap bits here, which are slightly smaller that I can't really um, do too much with um, because I did have a look in the instructions and it does say to practice your sharing first before you um, go on to the main garment. So I'm going to use um, these two um, scrap pieces of fabric to test out my shirring. So yeah, as I mentioned, um, it does say to do some testing first. So I'm just gonna get my machine set up and um, have a little play and we'll see how we get on. Okay, so I'm here um, with my machine all ready to be set up. So first thing um, first is you need um, two types of thread. You need your standard um, thread that you would use um, in your sewing machine, sort of day to day, and your shirring elastic. So here I've got a black shirring elastic and I've got um, the colour 339 for my um, main fabric. You can kind of see if I hold them under the light. Uh, shirring elastic is black um, and then this is a really, really dark blue because um, the fabric does look very much like it is a black background. Um, but if I hold it under the light there, you can actually see that that's quite a good uh, match. It is definitely a very, very, very dark blue. Um, so yes, I'm going to load this one um, in the top of my machine like I would normally. So I'll just do that now. Okay, so that is my um, spool at the top all loaded in. So that's all good. Um, and now to pop the um, sharing elastic on to the bobbin. And in um, Tilly's instructions, it says to uh, wind it on by hand. So um, I'll do that as well. So I'm just going to put my finger there and then just start winding or quite gently, making sure that I've got a lot to sort of play with. So I'm not sort of stretching it. I'm just kind of feeding it round and then I can let go of this once I've got a little bit on there to kind of go with and yeah just continue winding it so yeah I'm not really stretching it Ooh, just dropped it um or anything like that I'm just kind of feeding feeding it round and um she says not to overfill it so I've kind of well I guess done it to about there um so I'm going to snip off that end and then load it in um, my bobbin case. So that's now loaded in there. And then um, it does say uh, in the instructions to lower your needle to bring out um, the bobbin thread at the bottom. Okay, so there I have my uh, thread and my um, sharing elastic. So I'm gonna pull out a fair amount uh, from there just so that it pulls out um, so yeah when it's relaxed I suppose there you go you can kind of see that's how much of the sharing elastic I've got um, so I'm going to bring that to the back of the machine and then uh, what I need to do is get my um, test fabric so here is my test fabric. So let me give it a go just using this though first. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to um, line up uh, my fabric to where it is there. And um, it says to uh, stitch to and then back tack to um, and then carry on to the end and then uh, obviously back stitch at the end. 
so um yeah um as to uh length of stitch as well so i just mentioned that so um i need to adjust it to a longer stitch length so at the moment it's 2.5 and i am going to adjust this to five uh she says anywhere between four and five so i'm going to see what five is like if i find it's too tight i might um go down to maybe four and a half um but yeah i'll kind of see how i get on so yeah let's give it a go <laughs> And then I'm not going to cut off um, the end. I'm just going to um, pull it out and trim it that way. So uh, that's the first one. Uh, it's not looking particularly gathered. Not going to lie. Um, right, let's see what the next one looks like. Yes, well, that isn't basically gathering at all. That is not doing anything. So I'm obviously doing something wrong. Um, let me try adjusting my stitch length and let me see if that's uh, any different. Nope, that's not gathering up either. Right. Oh, joys of learning a new technique. I'm going to play around a little bit more and I'll come back to you once I have mastered it. <laughs> Hopefully. Right, I've got it. <laughs> Here is my sharing. There we go. That's looking a lot, lot better. Look at that. I'm actually quite happy with how even that looks as well. So I've done four um, rows. So I thought I'll just show you what I've done with my fifth. So what I've done down to four. And what I did is I took the bobbin out and I rewound it. But this time I wound it with quite a bit more tension. So, um, I mean, Tilly kind of says, you know, to wind it, you know, tighten up on the bobbin that it's not going to fall off, but not too tight that you're stretching it. Um, I personally found that actually stretching it quite a little bit, not really stretching it, but stretching it with quite a bit to, to wind it round, um, obviously gave me this um, effect. So, um, and I haven't drawn any lines apart from the first line, which I'm planning to do when I do my skirt piece. So I draw my first line and then I'm going to line up each of these on the machine. And um, the other thing which I did was that when I started sewing, I held the um, elastic because I thought oh, it was quite droopy there. I wonder if I kind of hold it taut when it's going through the machine to begin with. And then when I back tack and then I can let go and then focusing on stretching the, um, the fabric. I hope that makes sense. So I don't know how well this, this will show up. I will try and do it anyway. Um, but yeah, so I've got my, um, my lines there. So I'm going to line up my fabric. Uh, I need more hands, to be honest, when I think I'm doing this. So I'm gonna line it up so that it is against the last line of the shirring that I've just done and pop the presser foot down. I'm going to find my um, showing elastic at the back and I'm going to keep tension on that. So I'm going to put my finger sort of there so that I can kind of hold the fabric as well at the same time. Lower my needle. And then I'm going to pull the fabric so that I can see where my previous kind of line was. And I'm going to sew a couple and then go back okay and then once I've kind of done that then I'm going to let go of this here where I was holding that showing elastic and then this is then when I can pull the fabric so that I can see this line that I can follow all the way down to the edge of my presser foot Okay, gone back and forward again. I'm not cutting my thread, I'm just lifting my needle off, raising my presser foot, and then giving it quite a pull out to the side, because then when you relax it, you can see actually how short that bit of elastic is. Give that a snip. And then what I do is then pull it. And then it kind of stretches and relaxes. And that is my shirring. 
and yeah I think I'm pretty happy with that spacing there you can see this one at the bottom that I've just done isn't the best spacing because I was kind of doing it through the camera um a little bit um but yeah you can see there that yeah it's looking good so I think I'm happy to make a start on my skirt because in the instructions that is the first thing to do is to do those five lines of sharing on the skirt now I've probably used up most of my bobbin thread here so what I'm going to do yeah see my practicing I'm going to reload it again I'm just going to do one other line on here as a quick test to make sure that I've got the tension correct on here and um, then I will start on my main skirt wish me luck So I am really pleased with my shirring. I am, I just, I love it. So I think, yep, yeah, I've got the knack of it now. I know how it feels on the machine, like that sort of tension of the shirring elastic. Um, so I'm really glad that I did kind of play around with it for a while. Um, so yes, if you haven't tried it, then yeah, give it a go. I love it. And um, I'm really pleased with how neat I've got those um, spaces there. Um, I didn't actually end up drawing a line on the fabric at all. I didn't need to um, because in Tilly's instructions, she says to start your first sharing line um, an inch down. So all I did was just have a look on my sewing machine uh, where the inch mark was, do my first line. And then each line after that, I just lined up the previous row of stitching along my presser foot. Um, and so it was really easy to um, to keep to straight lines and even with the tension and everything. Um, so this is like my first um, skirt piece. This is my second one, which I've done as well. And if I rest them on top of each other, you can see they're more or less the same size. And um, if I was to grab one and kind of that's how it's going to sort of look on the skirt. That's going to look so nice. So yeah, I'm really, really pleased with myself. I love learning new skills. And yeah, I have to admit for quite a while, I've been a bit nervous about trying sharing just because I thought, oh, it's just it's going to be one of those things that I'm just not going to get on with. Um, but actually, I really like it. Really, really enjoyable. So um, yeah, I will uh, have a look at the instructions now. I presume it's just popping these two skirt pieces together but yeah I'll have a look and see what's next. Okay so um, what I need to do now is um, with the shirring I just need to give it a bit of a steam and that will um, hopefully bring it in um, as much as possible for um, when it's ready to wear um, and then yeah it is a case of just um, laying one piece over the other so I just need to pick which one I want as my um, front piece so I'd lie that down to say this is the the front and then if I'm going to say this is the back and then line up both skirt pieces and then line up the um the sharing lines with each other and then pin it all the way down and do that on both sides and then that effectively becomes my skirt I'm going to line it up pin it I'm going to sew it and then what I'm going to do is overlock the edges because I want a nice clean finish
I've just had to uh, whack it on quickly just to kind of see what it's like. Oh, I love it. I really love it. I, I'm really hoping that the bodice works because I love this skirt. It is so nice on the stomach, just how kind of, it's so stretchy, but yet it clings in. I love that. I just, I don't really own many kind of like shirred sort of ready to wear things. And um, yeah, I really like it. I'm, can you tell how much I'm enjoying this experience? <laughs> I love it. Um, so yes, yeah, so let me take this off and then we can move on to what we're doing next. <laughs> okay, so the next step is working on the front bodice. Um, however, I have just realised the time and um, I didn't actually start this so long until um, the afternoon and I need to get dinner on. So I'm going to leave it there for today. What I'm going to try and do is I might try and see if I can do a little bit more um, sort of bits to the sew along maybe in like the evenings during the week. I will uh, catch up with you um, when I come back to continue on with the sew along. <laughs> okay so back in the sewing room I'm going to see if I can get about an hour's worth um, of sewing done this evening. Um, so I'm moving on to the front bodice. Now I thought when I looked at this pattern that the tie at the front was um, like a drawstring but it isn't, it's actually um, got elasticated um, panels at the front and the little bow at the front is simply just, you know, for show. So um, yeah, I'm really intrigued to uh, to try this. So I've got my, um, my front bodice pieces here and um, if I open them out with the wrong side facing up, what I need to do is on this um, top section here, so I'm going to show you the pattern piece. So on this bit up here, what I need to do is I need to fold down the top, uh, which is, um, what is it, a quarter of an inch, and then press another three, sorry, another one and three eighths of an inch down as well. So it's just a case of, I'm going to take these out to the ironing board and do it. So I'm going to fold over once at the top, and that's going to be um, a quarter inch. And then I'm going to fold it over again, which will be one and three eighths of an inch. Um, so yeah, I've got the I've got the centimeters as well. So um, yeah, it's five mil turning over once, and then thirty five mil turning over again. So I'll do that on both pieces, and then it's just a case of top stitching them down. Okay, so that is done. So I folded over, I'm not sure if you were able to see here. So I folded over uh, that quarter inch and then folded over again that um, one and three eighths of an inch. And I find I've got one of these uh, little seam gauges. I find them really, really helpful because they've got all of the measurements there. And it's really, really nice and easy to kind of line up where you need to go and then go along with the iron and press. That is really, really helpful. So now all I need to do is top stitch um, to be able to create the channel where the elastic's going to be going. So I need to uh, top stitch, so 32 mil or one and a quarter inch from the end. So I'm gonna line up the edge with my sewing machine and then sew a line of top stitching. And then once I've done that, then I need to um, do another row of top stitching, 20 mil or three quarter um, of an inch uh, from the top fold. So I'll do a little zoom in when I do that. Okay, so I've done a little uh, zoom in on my machine. So first off, it's saying that you want to top stitch uh, one and a quarter inch from the end. So you can see I've got the folded side here. So this is the wrong side of the fabric. So this is the folded um, bit. And what we need to do is make sure that we line it up enough so that it catches this first fold here. So it secures it down. Now it's saying to do one and a quarter inch. Now usually on, um, like when you're sewing, you're normally looking at uh, about three eighths of an inch, um, half an inch, five eighths of an inch, whereas one and a quarter inch is actually quite far out here. Now what you can do, if you need a little bit, a bit, a little bit of help with guidance, um, my machine, I've got my, um, my one and a quarter inch actually quite sort of like up here. So it's kind of in between these two lines. Now what you can do is you can get some washi tape. 
So this is some lovely Christmas turtle um, washi tape that uh, my lovely friend Crafty Clyde um, on Instagram um, gave to me as a little gift. Um, so I thought I would use some of this. And what you can do is you can take a bit of your washi tape and you can line it up to your one and a quarter inch line. Just make sure you get that straight. There we go. I'm gonna oh, cut that off, funny angle, sorry. I'm trying to reach around the camera. And what you can do is you can use that edge as a little guide. So that is what I'm going to do for this. So I'm going to line up my fabric to the edge of this here, and I'm going to sew it in place. Now, I don't know how well you'll see that. You can just see that there. And you can see that I have caught all that little bit that I folded up with no gaps. Hope that kind of shows it well enough there. I can't quite <laughs> lift it up, but yeah. So there's no gap there. So you need to do that um, for the other one. Um, and then once you've done that, then you need to do the other side of the top stitching, which is from this side. And you want to do, uh, where are we? You want to do three quarters of an inch. So this one, again, my three quarters of the inch is kind of up here. So what I can do is I can either line up my fabric or because this washi tape is like really easy peeling, all you can do is pull it up and then I can get my three quarters of an inch line. Again, just make sure that it is straight, which is about there. Press that down and then you can use that again as your guide. So you can line up your edge of the fabric there and get sewing. There we go. Hopefully you'll just be able to see those two lines. That's what it looks like from the right side. And that is going to be our elastic channel. Okay, so now we've done that on both um, pieces. So now it's time for the elastic. So um, I've measured my elastic um, in the instructions. Um, it does tell you how long to um, cut your elastic, depending on your size. So I've gone with the recommendation. So on this one, it is uh, 14 and a half centimetres. And I've done um, a safety pin on either side. This is as per Tilly's instructions. And it's a case of um, we need to thread through um, one side of the elastic um, and then we need to have this one secured on this side so that we can then grab it when it's on the inside. So first off what we need to do is you can see this piece here you've got the armhole piece here and this is the front. So what we want to do is we want to um, get the elastic threaded through um, the front there all the way along to this side and then what we're going to do is we're going to secure that so we want to line it up just shy of the um, of the edge there. I think they said it's about three quarters of an inch and then top stitch that in place. Once you've then top stitched that in place, you can then find your other safety pin and pull it out to line up with the armhole and then top stitch that in place as well. And then of course, when you let go, it'll all ruffle up like that. So imagine that, but obviously with the elastic on the inside through the channel. So I'm gonna do that now. And there we go, so that is secured on either side. So I'm keeping on the uh, on the zoomed in position here because now I've got my two front bodice pieces. We need to attach um, them both together. But you'll notice on the pattern, there is a little um, circle which you need to mark on the reverse of your fabric. So I've done that using one of these um, 
Brixton pens. Um, they're really good. Um, they show up really well on the fabric and they disappear when you apply a bit of heat. Now, I probably wouldn't risk using it on the right side of the fabric, um, but on the reverse, it's absolutely fine. So you might be able to just about see my little red dot. So I know that that is the point where I don't sew past. So I'm gonna line up um, both of these bits of fabric. So I've got them both that way. So I'm gonna flick this one round. So just remember it's the straight edge we're after. And then we're going to flip the other one on top. So right sides together and line up those and then I'm going to pin all the way along and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to use that mark to start my sewing so I'm going to go forward and then back and then go all the way down to the bottom and then that will be um, the front bodice um, attached and then I'll go through the next step. So there we have our um, bodice front and um, now what we need to do is tidy up the inside so you can see this is where I've um, sewn it together. Now I haven't pressed open the seams yet. Um, now what you probably wanna do is you wanna take this to your ironing board and what you wanna do is, well there are actually there are two ways you could do this. You could do it the way that it's done in the instructions which will have a really nice neat finish or you can do it a slight cheap way. Um, I'm gonna do it the way as per the instructions because I think it will look really nice on the inside is what you can do is when you're pressing out your seams, what you want to do is you actually want to fold your seam over in half once and then roll it to the outside and top stitch it. So you are enclosing that seam. I hope you can see that kind of from the, from the busy print, but you can see this is the, um, the seam allowance. So what, what you want to do, is you want to fold it before that line so fold it down and press it and then fold it over again and press it and then top stitch and you want to do that all the way up now you can see that it splits at the top because this is where the circle was i'm not sure if you can see my little red dot there where i started um so what you want to do is when you get to the top Again, you want to fold it over once there and then fold it over again. Oops, my hand's probably in the way. And that will line up with your folding of the seam allowance. So that, it will give you a really nice finish. Now, if you're finding that really, really fiddly, what you could do is probably would be a better idea to do it before you sew the, the two um, bodice pieces together, is you could overlock um, either end of the fabric so not together so you're not you're not sewing it you're not overlocking those two pieces together you overlock the individual edges of this and then you can simply fold it out and then top stitch it that way so you've kind of you've still finished off your raw edge but you don't need to do a double fold so that is another way you could do it because if you were to overlock all the way up to the top, all you can do is when you turn it round is you can ever so slightly at an angle. Can you see that? Just kind of bring it down a bit so that your overlocking won't be sort of poking out. So you can do it that way. If you are really struggling with the, um, with the double folding of that bit, then um, yeah, you could do it that way as um, a sort of nice um, finish if you're finding it a bit fiddly. But I'm going to do the fiddly one. Um, I'm going to press it and top stitch it down and I'll show you what that looks like. So there we go. Uh, that's uh, the finished result uh, on the right side and on the reverse. Ooh. There we go. Um, that's the top stitching there. So just all the way down as close to the edge as you can. So again, a bit like when we were doing the channel that none of that um, folded over bit pokes out. So if you can hear rustling, that's Misty, uh, <laughs> my cat. <laughs> uh, okay, so that's that bit done. So yeah, let's move on to the little uh, ties at the front. So now we need to try and navigate uh, getting Misty out of the way. Yes, you're enjoying the sewing machine. And have some cuddles first. Yes. 
Don't worry, you'll get your cuddles. She gets very dribbly. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> yes, I love you too. I don't actually know if you can actually hear her purring. She's got a very cute purr. Ugh, dribbly. Yes, cuddles, and then I need to return to the salon. Oh yeah, are we falling asleep now? Okay. Should we, put, should we pop you on the bed? Should we pop you on the bed? Come on. Okay, so um, yeah, I've got fluff all over my face now. Uh, now we're moving on to the uh, little tie at the front, which is using the um, two thin fabric strips. Um, from the pattern and what we need to do is we need to fold these in a certain type of way um, which will just make it look really nice and clean finished so um, Tilly explains in the instructions how to fold and press it um, I'll do a little zoom in on the iron of um, what she means um, and then we go from there so welcome to my rather dirty ironing board <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure everyone's is a little bit like this. Um, so you've got this um, strip of fabric and what you want to do is turn it uh, the wrong side up. So of course this is the wrong side, this is the right side. And first off, um, the ends we just want to tuck in um, about a centimetre and um, get those pressed. So I'll do that first. So there we go, I've folded that over by about a centimetre. Um, I haven't measured because th these are just ties. Um, I don't think you need to be uh, very accurate um, as such. So that's the first step is to tuck those ends in. And then we're going to fold the whole thing in half lengthwise and give that a press. There we go. So I have folded that in half. And then what you want to do is you want to open it out again. Now you want to leave these ends folded in still. Yep, so you want to leave those folded in. But what you want to do is where you have pressed it, you want to use that crease line as a guide. So you want to, sorry, it's a little bit fiddly uh, trying to do that there. So you want to get the edge of your fabric and you want to line the raw edge up until that fold line. I hope that makes sense. So you see the fold line is here and you just want to fold the outer edge in half like that. Same with the other side, you want to fold that in half like that. Yep, so give that a nice press. So there we can see both sides folded in towards that center fold line and then it is just a case of folding it in half again so you're sealing in these raw edges so you fold it over once all the way along and give that a press and there we have once we've folded it and pressed it a really nice thin and delicate tie so what we need to do is, because obviously it is still um, open, is we need to go to the sewing machine and we need to top stitch or edge stitch close to this edge all the way down to close it up. Now it can be a little bit fiddly on the sewing machine because you're working with such a, a thin amount of fabric. What I'd recommend is starting maybe a little bit further down and then going forward and then going back up and down again and it might give you a little bit more um, purchase um, sort of on there. So you're going to do that with the other strap as well, get that folded and then I'm going to top stitch it and I'll show you what that looks like afterwards. Okay so those are my two little ties all top stitched and um, I've given them another press as well. Um, you're probably not going to really be able to see um, the detail on there but can you see that's my top stitching? So um, yeah, I'm really pleased with it. And the ends, yeah, they're all right, actually. They're not too bad. I mean, sometimes they can get a bit chewed in the machine, but actually these ones aren't too bad. And I'm pretty pleased with those. So now we just need to attach these to um, that front bit of the bodice. And the um, diagram shows it really, really well where to attach them. It's more or less where the channel of the elastic goes 
is just top stitch that in place. So I'll do that and then I will uh, show you a little close up. Okay, so there are the um, little ties attached. Now I did get a little bit of nesting um, when I was attaching them and I did unpick it and did it again and it still nested a bit. Now you can't really see because of my fabric um, that it's uh, sort of there. I have no idea if this is gonna show up. If it's not, I'll insert, I'll try and get a picture of it. But I do have um, some sort of nesting sort of going on there, but I think I can get away with it. I mean, they're very, you know, well secured sort of on at the back and everything, but yeah, just at the front, just a little bit of nesting. Probably if I'd maybe top stitched from the front, I wouldn't have had that, but I wouldn't have got the accuracy of um, top stitching from the back. But for me, Nobody is going to see that there's a tiny little bobble of thread um, up the top there, especially when I tie my little bow at the front. So yes, that is the front bodice done. So now we can move on to the back bodice. So the back bodice, uh, very similar to the front bodice, is you notice it's got uh, this shape up here and that is because what we're going to do at the top is we're going to um, fold over uh, again a small section and then fold over a larger section to create that channel but unlike the front bodice which has like that sort of like frilly edge this one doesn't so the measurements in here are to turn that top edge over so for the first time to sew it uh, sorry to press it um, a quarter of an inch or five mil um, and then fold another five eighths of an inch or 1.5 uh, centimeters 15 mil so you do um, the quarter of an inch and then five eighths of an inch and once you've done that then you can thread the elastic in exactly the same way as you did for the front so I'll come back to you when I'm at that point Okay, so that is the back bodice elastic all fitted. So I've folded over, top stitched, threaded the elastic through, and um, you'll notice in the instructions as well um, where it tells you to um, uh, sort of secure the elastic. Um, I'll see if I can show you on here, probably best this one. Um, is you go diagonally um, over the elastic on the edge. So what you're doing is you're following this line up to the top. So using that as the guide. So you're diagonally going across that way, if, if that kind of makes sense. You're kind of following this line of the fabric. So that secures it all in place. So there we go front bodice and back bodice done which is great so I'm going to leave it there for today as it is nearly my bedtime <laughs> need to have a cup of tea before bed and um, yeah then I will try and hop on again at some point to um, get the sleeves done and then hopefully construct the bodice see if I can get that done so yes I will uh, carry on uh, very soon <laughs> Hi everyone, so back to the sewing. Um, so the next step is to work on the sleeves. So you can see the sleeve pieces here, they're quite large pieces. And what we need to do is we need to finish off um, this edge up here. Now you'll notice with the pattern that um, you've got these, almost like these little cutout sections. And it's just from that cutout to here so it's just this top section here that you want to um, finish off with an overlocker or a zigzag stitch so that's just to um, give it um, an edge so you're just doing up to these points so I'm going to do that first on my two sleeve pieces So I've done my overlocking uh, for my finished um, edge. So yeah, you can, as I say, you can do overlocking or you can do a zigzag stitch. I like my overlocker, so that's what I've used. And um, just make sure if you are overlocking that you don't trim off any of the fabric. You just want to finish off the raw edge. So you might be able to see my overlocking there. So I just lined it up so it wouldn't trim any of it off. And then what we need to do is we need to create the elastic channel because as well as having the elastic at the front of the um, dress and at the back, it's also on the sleeve heads. 
So I'm really hoping this is going to fit really nicely having all of that elastic um, everywhere. So what you can see on mine, you can almost see, I'm not sure, well, I'm hoping you can see, it's almost kind of curving in on itself there. In today's instructions, she does say if you're using an overlocker, you can, you know, change the tensions and things. I haven't, and it still seems to be sort of curling a little bit. So what we need to do is where we've done the um, finished um, edge, we need to fold that over five eighths of an inch. So I will obviously do that more accurately when I've got my seam gauge and I'll go all the way around and pin it in place. And then again, just like we've done with the front of the bodice and the back, we need to create that elasticated channel. So I'm going to get it all pinned in place and then we'll go um, to the sewing machine and get those channels uh, sewn up. Okay, so I have folded over my fabric and then pinned it all in place. Don't know if you'll be able to see it from here. Um, I will bring it up a little bit closer so you can see there that I have folded it over and pinned it. So that uh, creates the channel. So the front bodice, um, you top stitch two lines and then created the channel. But this is like the back bodice piece. So um, with the back bodice piece, we turned it over, did one line of top stitching and then threaded the elastic through. So this is exactly the same as that. So I'm going to uh, top stitch this in place. I believe it's at half an inch, which should more or less line up exactly to my overlocking. So that'll be really nice and easy to follow. And then um, I will get the elastic inserted. stitched that in place and I've also inserted my elastic with my two uh, safety pins at either side like I've been doing with um, everything else. So um, in the instructions it now says to secure those either side so you just do um, attacking on each side and then um, you want to get the gathers a little bit more up towards the sleeve head. So after you've secured those into place then it's just a case of pulling up the gathers to more at the top of the sleeve head. So if I can kind of show you here, so it's a little bit flatter here and then it's more gathered at the top and then again flatter there. So most of your gathers sit at the top so it just means that it'll sit nicer at the top of the sleeve head so you get more of the gathers rather than having gathers at the front and the back. Okay, so both sleeves are now done. So um, let me show you the uh, first tacking stitch. So at the very edge, I've done one tacking stitch there. You see, this is just where we did that fold. You see on that side, so I've just tacked it just in there and then measured eight centimetres. And then I've done another tack just there and you see this bit doesn't have a lot of give because I've shimmied up the the fabric up the top here and I've done the same here so I've got my first tack here which um, is that part beginning of the, um, the fold over there and then eight centimeters up done another tacking there and again you can see that doesn't stretch hardly at all and then I've gathered all the fabric up the top and that is where it is super super stretchy so that's how it will sit on your little sleeve so it look really pretty uh, so now we need to just hem uh, these because then we're going to do the um, the shirring so just this um, bottom bit here so we're just going to hem that uh, we're going to turn it up a quarter of an inch and then another quarter of an inch so just do a double fold and then um, top stitch that into place so I'll do that quickly on both of these now Okay, so what I've done is I have folded um, my 
hem up by I mean it says in the instructions a quarter inch but that's that's very very narrow I've done more like three eighths of an inch and then another three eighths of an inch to at least have a sort of hem that I can be able to sort of guide through my machine quite nicely I mean at the end of the day you can do the hem as deep as you like <laughs> um, but this is just my preferred so I've done about three eighths of an inch and then another three eighths of an inch and um, I was looking at the instructions and I'm just a little bit worried about how underneath the arm it looks like there's going to be a raw um, edge because you're going to be hemming this but then when you bring it together when you sew um, you know the the underarm um, pieces then you're going to be left with raw edges and if you were to do the method of where you you sew and then you overlock both um, raw edges of the selvage together then you're going to have I think quite an uneven bit at the end where you could have like a bulky bit of overlocking I mean yeah you can tuck it in and thread it back um, on top of itself but I'm kind of thinking I think it's actually better just in my opinion to overlock these edges first before you fold this now I have folded it I've pressed it with with the iron so I think I'm just going to um, unravel so take out the two folds and then I'm going to overlock this bit here and then refold it up and then hem it because then at least I've got the two edges which when they meet up will be under here um, that they'll have a finished edge so that when I do sew it on the machine that I can simply press the, um, the seam open and I'll have finished edges so I hope that makes sense So that is done I've now hemmed the sleeve and then yeah I've done the, um, the overlocking so yes I just think when you bring it in it'll just mean that when um, you press the seams out I think it'll just look a bit nicer I mean to be honest you can just leave that hem until um, the end but the thing is when you're doing the sharing I think that's why Tilly's said to do it now is because once you do the sharing and it's all gathered it's going to be very, very fiddly to um, then do the uh, the double fold and then top stitch. So, you know, it probably would be quite difficult to do it that way. But I think this way will work having the um, the overlooking on each side to make it a bit neater. But we will see. Um, so now it is sharing again. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do exactly what I did um, on the skirt. I'm going to do five lines of shirring um, and I think it is about one and five eighths of an inch I think up from the hem that you do your first line and then I will do a gap do the second line gap second line third line fourth line um, until I got five uh, rows of shirring so I won't um, film that bit because you've seen that bit with the skirt so I won't waste your time on that <laughs> but it's exactly the same process so I'm going to do that for both of the sleeves and then I'll come back to you once I've done that. Okay so sharing is done on both sleeves there you can see and um, yeah I've given it a nice little steam as well I love how that sort of frill at the end is looking I think it's just going to look so pretty just like imagine it on there and then just that little frill on the elbow it's just so cute <laughs> I'm really excited about this dress I really hope it fits when it's all um when it's all done I think it's just gonna look so pretty 
So yeah, I've done the sleeves. Um, so I'm gonna leave it there for today because again, it's quite late now. Um, I've been doing this obviously over a, a few evenings and things. So um, tomorrow, um, well, I mentioned um, I've got a wedding reception that I'm going to, which is tomorrow, which is Saturday. Um, so I do have tomorrow to finish it off. Um, so I just need to attach the sleeves to the front and back bodice, attach the skirt to the bodice and then hem it. So yeah, I think I will be able to uh, get that done quite easily and relaxed. Fingers crossed. <laughs> so yeah, I will uh, catch up with you um, tomorrow to get it finished off. <laughs> Hi everyone, welcome back and uh, I've also been joined by Bentley <laughs> as well. Um, so yes, I did my sleeves and I must admit, I was looking at these going, don't they, don't they look a little bit like clams? like shells <laughs> on this bit. I just think that's funny. Um, anyway, um, what we need to do now is we need to attach the sleeves to the front bodice. Um, so let me just grab that front bodice piece. Okay, so front bodice piece. So what we need to do is we need to work out um, what is the front part of the sleeve and which part is the back part of the sleeve. So the back part of the sleeve will have the double notch and the front part of the sleeve will have the single notch. So what I'll do is I'll do a little zoom in um, on this bit just so that you can kind of see um, how I'm working on that. Okay, so I've got my sleeve pieces here. So the um, elastic for the shoulder is at the top and of course there is the sharing at the bottom. And what you're looking to find is the sides with the single notch. So um, I've got my single notch here on this side and on the other side, I've got my single notch here. So on the other side, I've got my double notches. So that is the side we want to work on. And then we're going to grab our front bodice piece. And what we need to try and find is, so you've got the tie and the elastic up here. And then if you follow it down, you'll then find your single notch that side. So what we're trying to do is line up both of those single notches to line up with the sleeve piece. So when it's turned out, we need to get a slightly wider view, but that's what we're kind of looking for. So it means, because we've got the single notches on the right side of the fabric, this side and here, we just need to flip this over and we need to, so if I just focus on one sleeve, we need to find the notch there, that's on the sleeve, and we need to find the notch that is on the bodice, which is here, and we need to line those two up and get that pinned in place. So once that's got a pin in, then we just need to follow it down to the end so you can see the edge of the bodice and the edge of the sleeve so that can get lined up you see how that kind of fits in between those two pins just probably want to line that up as well and get a pin in there and then you've got the other side so we've done like the easy side so this bit is where you've got the sleeve with the elastic at the top and this is a slightly tauter bit um, that we stretched out of the elastic and then you've got the bodice with the elastic and the ruffle. Now if you were to try to line up these two pieces you'll find that it doesn't fit. So in the instructions what it's saying is to lay it flat and what you're doing is you're lining up this bit of elastic with this bit here. So you're leaving this frilly bit you'll find that there's a little triangle there so you're lining up I hope you can see that there so this is that part of the elastic here you can just see my stitching line here and this stitching line here you want to meet those up so you'll find that it will fit quite nicely when you line those up and yet you'll get that little bit of that triangle there so you get that pinned in place as well okay so that is um the first bit now you may find that there's some like little bits here that just need to get flattened out so just make sure you don't have any bumps or anything what i might do is i might just whack in another pin 
just slightly lower down just so that I know that I'm not going to get any bunching up on either side but yeah that is um, what we need to do there I'm also going to add another pin as well up here just so that this back piece where I've got that little triangle doesn't move about too much because what we're going to do is we're going to sew a line let me get it so that you can see it okay hopefully that angles a bit better so um, what we're going to do when we're sewing it is we're going to start from this side and we're going to sew all the way down here and then we're going to go up at a slight angle now in the instructions it does say sew up to the dot now I don't find the dot very helpful because where I would have marked the dot <laughs> would have actually been on the inside bit of this fabric. I wouldn't have really been able to have seen it. Um, so it doesn't really help me too much, but you can get the general gist of what you need to do from the diagrams from the pattern piece. So what it will be is you need to sew up to basically this bit of the of this little triangle so you're going to go along here and then when you get to about here you're then going to angle it up at a curve to then go up here so go along and up yep along and up so that's the sort of shape that you want to be doing Okay, so I've done that now and I'm hoping you'll be able to see my stitch line. So you can see I followed it along here and then when I've got to this point, I've then gone, oh, I don't know if you'll be able to see, I've then gone up here. Might be able to see it a little bit more on the other side, how I've gone up here. That little curve. I really hope that kind of shows as I say it it does show it really well in the um, in the diagram and what that means is then when you open out the top so of course this is the front part of the bodice there um, and this is your sleeve you've got that lovely join now can you see you've got your stitching line going down here and then meeting it so it starts going across so those lines join up and you get that lovely effect. Now this bit at the back, it does say in the instructions, for some reason it says after you've done the back bodice, I don't know why, is to um, this bit to fold to the sleeve side and then do a little tack to keep that down and in place. Now what I'm going to do before I move on to the back piece is um, this bit that I've just sewn I'm actually going to finish it off with an overlock because otherwise this will be left raw um, it won't make any difference obviously up here to anything now I don't want to cut this little triangle off I'm going to be overlocking all the way along and then following it up to that triangle because then when I open it out I still want to use that triangle piece to push towards the sleeve and then tack it in place so I'm going to do that and then I'm going to move on to the back piece. So I thought I would show you um, what I've done when I've done the overlocking. So just be, um, I thought I'd mention it, just be careful that when you're feeding it through the overlocker on this bit, that you're not catching this part of the sleeve when you go up to that little triangle. You want to kind of go up and up to that triangle. You don't want to be catching this so that when you open it out, I've still got that little triangle there to tuck and um, secure in place just here. Now you'll notice there's probably just a little tiny bit here where I didn't quite catch the um, overlocking, and but that's fine because when I turn it in and I secure it in place, if I show you what it will look like from the back, you'll see that that overlocking is all nice and um, covered up so you don't have any of that showing so I just thought I'd mention that so then that is all secured you can see there that is sitting nicely and that little triangle is flat so it's not going to poke out anywhere so um that is obviously the front bodice now attached so now I'm going to shift this down because we're going to be working 
at the back bodice. So if you remember me saying there is a um, single notch on the sleeve at the front and a double notch on the back. And you'll notice on your back piece that there is also some, I'm just trying to see if I can see it there, um, two notches there. And what you want to do is you want to line that up. So because we want to do it right sides together, a bit like we did with the front bodice, you want to line up your two notches here with your two notches on the sleeve. So again, line those up and get those pinned in place. So once you've pinned where the notches are, this one is a lot more straightforward. You just literally line up um, this end and also where the elastic is, you just line that up like normal. So it's a really nice, um, easy line to follow. So you wanna pin that in place, do exactly the same on the other arm. And then I'm going to sew along there. And then also what I'm going to do is again, I'm going to overlock so that I've got a nice neat edge. Okay, so there we go. The sleeves are now attached to the bodice. That's brilliant, it's looking so nice. Um, just to note what I did is when I did finish off the overlocking on the sleeves to attach the back bodice um, I did turn the seam allowance um, up towards the sleeve and do another um, tack in place. It doesn't say that to do it in the instructions but just like the front where I turned those little triangles towards the sleeve and did a little um, stitching line just to tack it in place I also did that on the back so pressed the sort of triangles um, to the sleeve and tacked them in place just because then it was going to be lying really nice and flat. So next up is, oh yes, we need to actually join up the bodice. So at the moment, I mean, it's a very grisly print, you probably can't see it too well, um, but this is the front um, and these are the sleeves. And what we need to do is to attach the sleeves because at the moment all under here is open. So what we want to do is we want to turn it inside out. So now we've got it inside out with the front bodice um, facing me here. And what we want to do is we want to grab your sleeve and we want to line up the two um, ends of the sleeve and pin that in place. Where it joins um, under the armpit, you want to again join those up and then all the way down to the waist. So you're sewing that line there and that will then join up all under here. So just um, bear in mind when you're lining up your sleeve pieces to get the shirring lined up and also to get the underarm uh, seam lined up as well. I just sort of thought when I was um, pinning this bit. So this bit at the bottom um, I don't have any overlocking on. You see where I've done it on the sleeve so that I could press that open? I must admit I forgot about this section and this section obviously isn't overlocked. Now what I could do is I could carry on sewing it down and then just overlock from the underarm um, and then down. Um, so creating the two seams together with the overlock. But then I think it would look a bit strange where I'm pressing open that bit. So what I'm actually going to do is um, the two edges where they're um, raw, I'm actually going to overlock them first before I um, pin all of that together and um, sew and overlock that. So at least then I can press out all of the seams. So I hope that makes sense. And uh, once I've done all of that, then I can, I can show you what I mean. So just to show you what I've done, so beforehand when I had um, done 
the uh, sleeves. I'd overlocked individually the um, seam allowance on either side. So that means I can press that open. But it was this bit all the way down here on this section, which wasn't overlocked. So in theory, I should have probably done it um, before I'd sewn up the sleeves, but yeah, I didn't really think about it. Um, so all I've done is um, I've sewn, probably I started from about here. So you see where that kind of overlocking might kind of um, overlap a little bit. And um, then I carried on all the way down. And what I did is actually quite handy in a way as well, doing it this way, is that your seam allowance, you can actually lock in place facing the way that you've um, attached it to the um, sleeve. So you know that triangle that I was talking about where you have to tack it in place? So you can make sure that when you're doing the overlocking, you can almost lock that seam allowance in place. I hope that kind of makes sense. So that when you um, line up the seams, when you're then sewing it, you don't have to worry too much about the seam allowance kind of flopping the wrong way. I hope that sort of makes sense anyway. I <laughs> thought that might help. So yep, I'm gonna carry on pinning now um, all the way down, um, sewing that and then press all of that open. Right, so that is all done. And I have pressed open my seams all the way under the arm. And one thing I have just done as well is, um, do you remember me saying about the way that the sleeve is um, constructed? will mean that you have to have your seam allowances um, sort of flat or to the side or however you're doing it. And what I've done is I've pressed the seam allowances open and then what I've done is I've followed the line of the hem and I've done a little uh, tacking it down as well. So that means it's permanently open um, just because I was finding that when I actually um, tried it on to see how it fit is that sometimes these little um seam allowances could like pop out a little bit so you get like sort of little triangle bits <laughs> coming out so i've just secured that in place so it means that they won't protrude um and they'll stay open as well so it just means that it'll be um nicely sort of finished so yes really really pleased with it so far so i just need to get the skirt attached and then hem the skirt so nearly there so i want to grab my skirt piece so I've got the skirt piece and I'm going to turn the top the right way out. Okay, so we've got that um, all lined up. So we've got the front piece here. And then with the skirt, what we're going to do is we're going to turn the skirt inside out. Now it doesn't necessarily have a front and a back, so you can pick either or. Um, but what we're going to do is we're going to line up the top of the skirt with the um, raw edge here. So what we need to do is we actually need to um, do it so that we tuck the top inside the skirt. So I'm going to open the skirt and I'm going to pop that in the skirt there and pull that through. So here I've got my skirt and my bodice all in one. Right, so I think this might be a little bit difficult for me to show you just because of how much everything is gathered up, but bear with me. Um, so as I said, I've pulled through the, um, the, the bodice and the skirt to um, line up. So when I hold the side seams like that, I'm holding the skirt and the bodice. So if I look in there, I can see the bodice. And first off, what you want to line up is the side seams. So the side seam of the skirt and the side seam of the bodice. You can see there where I've pressed it out and I've put some pins in there so to secure one side. And then you go to the other side and again, you've got your side seam here and your side seam of the bodice. Oh, if I can do that, I'm looking through the camera lens. <laughs> there we go, your side seam of the bodice and the skirt and you've lined that up. So that is your first thing. And then um, there was notches that we were told to put on the pattern pieces, which were on the skirt, and um, that will help you line it up. So you need to find your little notch on your skirt piece. Mine was just here, you probably can't really see it, but little notch there. And then you're gonna line that up with 
the front bit here. So this is where we um, folded it under and then top stitched. So again, pin that there. Now on the skirt on the back, now I noticed I've got a notch on my skirt piece, but I didn't put a notch on the centre back. Now all I did was I grabbed the centre back um, with the um, side seams together, um, flattened it out until I knew where the centre back was. I gave it a little snip so that I could create my own little notch and I lined it up with the skirt centre back notch as well. And I've popped a pin in there. So those are your four points that have anchored it down so you know that it's as even as it can be. Now, you can probably see in here that there is loads of the bodice. It's really, really loose um, between those points. Now, if I was to grab the side seam, and this is the centre back, if I was to hold that and then pull it, you can then see it matches up. Obviously, when I'm on the machine, it'll be a bit more like up there. <laughs> um, but that's what you're going to need to do on the machine is you're going to have to rest it and then pull until they are both um, flattened together. And then you can sew it. And then, of course, then when you stop sewing and let go, it will crinkle back together and it will create that gathering effect around the whole skirt. So I'll just go to the machine and um, just show you how I'm going to do that. Okay, so I'm at my machine and I have lined up one of the side seams. So that's where I'm gonna start. I'm gonna start from a side seam and then move to, so this is my um, center back. So I'm starting on this side and then I'm gonna find my center back pin down here. And what I'm going to do is when I'm sewing, I'm going to pull this. You see, so this part of the bodice is lying flat. So you probably want to um, do it in small sections. So I'm stretching it all the way out here, but what might be quite a nice thing to do is once you've kind of stretched it out, you may want to maybe grab in the middle, maybe there, it might make it a little bit easier so that you're working in smaller sections when you're stretching it out. And then of course, once we've sewn it and we let go, then it will create that gather. Okay, and I'm gonna stop about there. And then here is my center back pin. And again, stretch it out. Try and get those two bits of fabric as lined up as you can. Okay, and then we are at the next side seam and then you just need to repeat that process again. I'm not gonna lie, that is a little bit fiddly, more so when I'm trying to look through a camera <laughs> as well. But um, yeah, it's that's the way to do it because then it automatically gathers everything around. So I'm gonna do that for the front bit and then what I'm going to do is um, check that I haven't created any um, like big puckers or anything like that um, and then I'll come back to you. Okay, so it looks all good to me. That's on the uh, the right side. So yeah, it looks good. So now what I'm going to do is I am going to, um, on the bit that I've just sewn, I'm going to overlock all the way around to get a nice, neat, clean edge on that as well. So there we go. The dress is constructed. <laughs> I'm really loving how it looks. And um, yeah, I just need to um, hem it now. So Tilly recommends a uh, three eighths of an inch um, turn up and then another three eighths of an inch turn up as well, which is what I did for um, the sleeves <laughs> anyway. Um, so depending on if you're wanting it um, a bit shorter than that, then you can you know cut a bit more off the bottom or you could do a slightly deeper hem what i'm going to do is i'm just going to try it on um, and just see whether i'm happy with just that um small hem otherwise i might do a little bit of a deeper hem but i think actually i think that's going to be a really nice length on me so i'm just going to quickly try it on and then do the hem so what i'm going to do is i'm going to take the um skirt or the, or the dress out to the ironing board 
and actually press up that three eighths of an inch or whatever I want to do and then do another fold on top of that, get it all pinned in place and then uh, whiz it through the sewing machine. this dress I think it's got some fabulous details in and I'm really really pleased with the finished result. I must admit um, I love the fact that the waist is so comfortable <laughs> so even though it looks quite fitted when you stretch it out there is just so much room so you know if you you know feel a bit bloated or anything like that then it will just you know grow with you and it will be really really comfortable to wear i really really like the sharing so nice and um, yeah i think potentially i might have lowered the bodice um like you know extended it maybe about an inch i think maybe next time if i do make it i, mean, I don't think it makes a massive amount of difference but the thing is is my waist is here and the sharing is above um, my waist and I think I would like it just to sit ever so slightly further down so that the sharing was to be more on my natural waistline but I don't think it takes away from the overall dress or anything like that um, I still really really like it um, the front as well with the um, elastic at the front it fits really nicely there is absolutely no gaping or anything like that the only thing I would say is if I was to maybe drop something and lean down to get something when you bring your arms forward it does have a tendency maybe to gape a little bit then but nothing that's going to you know not be very uh, modest or anything like that um i think i'll be absolutely fine with that with the sleeves as well i love these like frilly bits <laughs> on the sleeve i think they're just the right amount of um puffiness for me i don't really like a big puff sleeve but just a little gentle puff I think is really nice. I'm really pleased that I picked viscose for this. Also the sleeve head as well being elasticated, brilliant as well. I mean I'm wearing a bra and you can see that it is very bra friendly um, on there. So yeah really really nice. Again with the elastic on the back as well just gives that extra bit of security so you feel like everything's clinging you know nicely um, at the top. Um, yeah, I mean, what else to say really? Um, the length, I'm really happy with the length. I did do as what, you can't really see there, um, I did do what Tilly instructed, doing three eighths of an inch and then another three eighths of an inch. And then when I was putting it through the machine, um, I was sewing it um, just shy of that. So I've got a reasonably narrow hem. Um, but yeah, I really, really like it. And I'm so pleased that I managed to get it finished in time to um, go to my friend's um, wedding reception this afternoon with it. So yeah, very, very, very pleased. <laughs> so I guess final thoughts on the pattern. I mean, Tilly's instructions are absolutely brilliant. Um, I didn't struggle at any point. The only thing I would say is that it would be nice maybe to have seen some more how to finish the raw edges on the inside because yeah I did have to kind of work that out a little bit myself. Um, if you had followed the instructions completely as it is then you would have had some raw edges on the inside. Um, but yeah, Tilly's instructions are absolutely brilliant. Thank you so much Tilly for um, helping me do my sharing for the first time. Not that she's watching, but um, yeah, I think it's really nice that I have learnt that sharing skill now and um, yeah, I can use that now for other projects. So what I'm going to do is I will be showing this to you um, in a better sort of light. Um, I'll try and get some footage of me out in my garden, um, maybe doing a couple of twirls or something. So you can actually see all of the details and everything. So I will insert that at the end of the video. So if you did enjoy the video, then please do give me a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed already, it would be lovely if you could. And then you can follow along with all my other sew alongs that I do and all my other sort of videos, like my plans video, so you can vote for which one you'd like to see as the sew along. 
And if in particular this video you did find helpful, if you do want to give me a thank you, then I do have a Ko-fi page. So if you wanted to give me a thank you with uh, buying me a cup of tea, then that would be lovely as well. Thank you. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to insert my twirls and everything. And um, yeah, I'll speak to you very soon in my next video. Hope you enjoyed. Take care. Bye.